Good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests, professional and expertise from oil and gas industry, the respected teacher, students, and everyone. Firstly, please allow me to take this opportunity to say thank you for giving me such a fine chance to share my knowledge to younger generation. Today, my targeted audience will be the students which will potentially be working for wine and gas industry in the very near future. Also, I would like to express my sincere thanks to each and individual who organized this conference. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Chow Min Ted. I was graduated from University Technology Personas with the engineering degree in electrical and electronic. So today, I will cover the overview of offshore natural gas and production in Myanmar and I would like to highlight to future generation that where we stand in offshore natural gas production. Uh, compared to other fossil fuel, burning natural gas is a lot more cleaner and emits uh, considerably less amount of pine products, so a lot of our generation authorities are encouraged to produce electrical power from natural gas. It is a common predict to measure the natural gas in volume and with the aid of gas chromatography and we can determine the gas calorific value and it is also a common practice to express natural gas and trade commercially in energy MMBDU. So currently, as of uh, yesterday, the electricity produced from natural gas is 1,500 megawatt out of 3,500 megawatt. So it's safe to say that natural gas is responsible for 43% of electricity generation in Myanmar. These are the brief introduction about the offshore block. Uh, we have 27 shallow water and 24 deep water offshore block and 38 of them are operated by international wine gas company. Currently there are four projects which are in uh, production stage and this figure shows total offshore natural gas production which is around 1,700 million scarf. And 425 of natural, this natural gas is a uh, sublime for domestic usage, while 1,000 and around 300 million scarf is export to Thailand and the People's Republic of China. So investing in wine and gas project are quite risky, so it is a common practice to share the investment between international wine and gas company together with state-owned wine and gas company. This is the general description about Yerna project, which is operated by Total ENB Myanmar. Currently, the, it is export 565 million scrap to Thailand, TDD, and the, for the domestic usage, 225 million scrap is supplied mainly for electricity generation. This beautiful picture illustrates the Yerevan project. Similarly, this joint venture is shared between Patronas, MUGE, Nibon Oil from Japan and PDD EBI. This is also the general description about the Yerevan project which also included offshore facility and onshore facilities. Uh, since it is in declining phase, current field production is 70 million scar, where uh, 60 million scar is exported to Thailand. This is the only project which can commer commercially produce uh, condensate. So these produced condensate are stored in uh, floating storage and offloading unit FSO. This is the general specification of FSO unit. This is newly installed FSO. So why we have then the tendering system? We can offload agreeable condensate to third party shuttle tanga like illustrated in following pictures.
as of Shui project, the consortium member have formed between Moscow International, MOGE, ONGC, and Gale from India, and Gokes uh, from Korea. This is also the general description about Shui project. Current free production is 500, while 400 is exported to uh, People Republic of China, and domestic is allocated 100 million scarf. Finally, Zodika project is a recently developed project. It is shared between PTD EBI and MOG. This is also the general description about Zodika project. Current field production is 345 and domestic is supplied 100 million scarf, while export 245 million scarf is exported to China. This pipeline now will show major pipeline uh, configuration associated with offshore production. This is the famous life cycle of uh, petroleum production activity. In the beginning, we have to take several survey, 2D, 3D, and later on we have to come up with data processing and modeling. Later in next phase, appraising where we drill appraisal well to have a better understanding of Anthony hydrocarbon behavior. In the development stage, there, there will be a lot of study like preliminary study and front end engineering design. And after the final investment decision, we move on to business engineering and detailed engineering design. Then we follow by the procurement, construction, transportation, installation, and commissioning. These are some of the pictures taken in development phase of Saudi Car project. This is the general flow diagram of steps involved in production of offshore natural gas. Decommissioning is the last phase of wire gas project where the production is no longer economy. We have to remove and dispose these installation in proper procedure. So Safety is first priority in oil and gas industry because uh, probably the oil and gas industry is one of the most risky industry all over the world. So this is why it is paramount important to comply with HSC rules and regulation. Fortunately, uh, I am proud to say that oil and gas industry has one of the lowest number of incident occur compared to other sectors. This is again the general description of production. And if we look at the offshore facility, first the natural gas is produced and controlled by the warehead equipment. Later on, it uh, conveys the natural gas to the three phase separation. Later on, uh, for the transportation purpose, we have to transport gas to compression system in order to build up the pressure. As the last stage, uh, in order to remove moisture from natural gas, we have to undergo dehydration process. Then we are ready to transport to export pipeline. Natural gas produced from well has a considerable amount of pressure and this pressure it has to be controlled by well head and Christmas tree, especially with the choke valve. And these settings are recommended by the reservoir engineers and reservoir management team. And this picture is what it is look like in typical well head platform. And in some project, when the this uh, wellhead and Christmas tree equipment installed underground to then we call it subsea wellhead. After that, natural gas are undergo in separation phase where we can separate water, condensate and sand from the natural gas. 
After that, we are ready to go move on to the compression stage. Uh, typically, gas from the separation uh, prior to move to the compressor package, gas from the separation is undergo into the section scrubber for further purifying. And fuel gas, which extract uh, natural gas from separation, is fed up to gas turbine, which it can provide rotational energy to compressor. So this gas from separation is compressed to have uh, more build up pressure, making them uh, quite hot and it is not good for our production facilities. So we have to heat exchange using the heat exchanger. At the last stage of processing, we have to convey the natural gas to the hydration package. Before I move to the dehydration package, at the earlier lifetime of the project, we may only need a few compression system in order to transport uh, together with our promised delivery pressure. But later on, as the declining of production warehouse pressure, we can install to start compression in platform as well as in the onshore facility and right between the metering and end user. This is a description of what glycol dehydration is looks like, what gas are undergoing with the glycol contractor, and we can have the, our desired dry gas. Uh, typically, the gas sale agreement specifying that uh, water content in the natural gas has to be lower than seven pounds per million scarf. So this is other essential facility or system in uh, offshore area. We have our own fuel system, which can we, which we can generate electrical power and we distribute. We have uh, several safety barrier, including uh, emergency shutdown valve and emergency shutdown logic. Uh, of course, we need to have a flare system and firefighting, lifeboat, and life wine for emergency response. When we look at the onshore facility, these uh, equipment are generally could be found in this pipeline station. The main purpose is the main purpose of pipeline station is to regulate or to control the pressure requirement set out by the customers. It can also facilitate pit receiving and launching for pipeline inspection activities. We can also have additional filtering and separation of uh, sales gas and com compression package could be installed if necessary. And then we are ready to move on to the metering station. The main and sole purpose of metering station is to execute custody metering or physical metering, we call it, in the sense of quantitatively and qualitatively. These are some of the illustration of uh, orifice metering gas chromatograph, the brain of the metering system, flow commuter, and of course we have a control station, we call it SCADA system. After that, we are ready to export to the end user. So I would like to uh, introduce a little bit of metering station, what we use in Myanmar. Firstly, this um, this is called orific plates, and its purpose is to create the differential pressure across the orific meter. Well, together with the uh, temperature and pressure measurement, we can work out how much volume is flowing through across this orific plate. And another type is ultrasonic flow meter. It is based on the transit time difference, as we can see in the illustration. The sound wave which travel with the floor is uh, move up quite fast compared to the sound wave which flow against the natural gas flow. By comparison, we can work out the velocity that later on we convert to volumetric measurement. This picture, this picture illustrates what typical moisture analyzer looks like and it can, it can measure how much water is uh, situated in the natural gas. This is the inside part of flow commuter. 
as we can see there there are some chips where we can program our desired calculation and this picture is taken during the annual calibration of a gas chromatograph which determines the gas composition this orifice and ultrasonic metering should be verified six monthly or yearly basics to have a better accuracy in order to ensure our optimized accuracy meter tube inspection should be carried out five yearly and these equipment are field uh, transmitter this is for temperature pressure and differential pressure and in meter calibration where we do it periodically like three monthly we have to calibrate this field transmitter with the reference standardized equipment so uh, i would like to share these are some job opportunities for students who, who are willing to work for the offshore environment uh, we can have a mechanical background electrical civil petroleum and geology and most importantly we if you are not from this category you can still be a fee planner logistic radio operator and most importantly legal and finance executive okay with that i would like to welcome all future generation to work for oil and gas industry uh, thank you all for your attention and i hope my presentation is quite informative thank you Can you explain a little bit how to remove these from your system? Thank you for the question. So we have an experience producing natural gas together with carbon dioxide and nitrogen. One of the examples is we install nitrogen removal unit uh, in Yama. Okay, for the carbon dioxide uh, in Jerkum project, in coming next. Man, we are ready to install acid gas removal unit and its sole purpose is to remove those uh, carbon dioxide from the natural gas. Okay, thank you. I hope I answered your question. Why did you do You must use uh, natural gas. Thank you for the question. For the domestic usage, uh, I'm talking from the perspective of electricity power generation. We have several uh, electricity power generation from gas turbine and from gas engine. Currently, we can export contractually 425 and we are trying our best to further increase this domestic amount. And if I am not uh, mistaken, in next six months, uh, Another 50 million square from Shui project will be added to this amount. For the export, uh, if uh, PTD, uh, we are export to the Thailand, they are also using it for also for the power generation. And for the China, I think it, it is their secondary base load. Uh, when they have the primary load, if the primary load fail, this 100 million, uh, sorry, 400 million scar is a uh, result for the uh, secondary load. One more question. The question is for the amount that we buy back from the exporting countries, from the foreign countries. Yes. What is the price difference? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. For that case, uh, take an example in Shui project. When we negotiate to add a 50 million scale in here, uh, because of the project internal rate of return, we have to the, we have to buy back with export gas price. For this, the uh, surplus gas more than the uh, <coughs> it has to be either a negotiated price, which which is which should be less than the exporting price, or some 
the pricing mechanism. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, for free project, uh, current price is around seven points uh, something. But uh, this power generator, which will be working in the Chaoshu area, they are quite happy with that price because their initial plan is to import LNG, then they generate the electricity. Uh, the current LNG price is much higher than the Shui project price, so they, right now they are willing to pay and happy to pay for export price. No, same with the export price. I'm comparing to the LNG price because their initial plan is to import LNG and to generate electricity. So compare with this LNG price, our domestic gas, even we pay with the export price, is much lower. So they are happy to pay for it. If the uh, one of the production is somewhere like 500 mm CLD, yep. so we have the entitlement to purchase up to 100 mm yes. yes. But if we ask them to supply us more, something like uh, plus 20 mm CLD, for that amount of 20 mm CLD, what is the price that we have to pay? I think uh, we have to pay with domestic price because for let's say amount up to 15, we have a swing volume. I mean that normal domestic supply from Shui project is 100, but we can nominate up to 115 as a swing.